Well, a very good friend, a very good old friend who's really, really kind to me when I was first starting out in guitar, um, has this one guitar that he loves, and it's been in a bad way. And I did a before video showing the condition it came in, in, and for whatever reason, that video messed up, didn't play. So I've got good quality um, starting from when I removed the hardware to get started. At the end of the video, I'll show the whole guitar. Um, it's a Bennett, and it is kind of a cross between an Epiphone Coronet and an SG Special. And it's a pretty cool guitar, but uh, I cannot show you the full before because that footage, for whatever reason, got corrupted. So next you'll see me digging in. The hardware off, and this thumb wheel is so dodged onto the uh, stud that when I back it, the thumb wheel off, the whole stud wants to come out of the guitar. So I'm going to tighten it as much as I can to make sure that stud is fully seated. And hopefully that will break the corrosion here. There it goes. Let me lower that. This one was fine. I didn't dirt. So now that I've got that corrosion stuff out of the way, let me try to free up the threads a little bit. All right, so let me give that a little, a little bit of WD D forty and try not to get it on the finish. Well, at least not let it sit on the finish for too long. Don't want to make a big clean spot in the middle of the guitar. Perish the thought. And again, I'm not trying to make it look new or anything. Just get some of the worst of it out where it mechanically counts. There we go. All right. So these studs are in the guitar and the threads are much cleaner. Let's look at the bridge stuff. All right, there's cool funk, and there's funk that actually keeps the guitar from working well. Guess which category this is. So I'm going to give all this hardware an initial round in my ultrasonic cleaner, and then I'm going to remove these saddles and clean them, and I'll get all that yuck out. Um, Bennett signed and dated this, uh, 2000, and the... Control cavity is shielded, and the only connection into the guitar itself is that wire going to the bridge ground. Let me desolder that, and then we can pull the pick guard separate and work on the electronics. All right, so it's got a PF clone. I don't know if it's a Gibson or what. It's been opened in the past. It's got two 250K pots, spline shaft, and a switchcraft jack. Well, I want to call Bennett out for doing a fairly outstanding wiring job on this. Look at that big, thick bus holding the pots together and the little twists tying the braided wire to it so it's all nice and neat. Uh, makes it a little harder for me to replicate. It makes it a little bit harder to undo all this, but I think I'm up to the challenge. Okay, all the hardware just came out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. I used a white vinegar and distilled water combination. Probably spent about 15 minutes being vibrated. That got so much junk off. Now it's all in a naphtha bath to make sure that there's no water on any of the parts. I'm gonna let that sit in that naphtha for just a little bit more. Uh, it'll get some of the remaining corrosion loosened and then I'll take it out and clean them all up and dry them all off and uh, use extra naphtha lighter fluid to burn some a patch of weeds in the backyard. And, the hardware will be ready to go back on the guitar. Put that to the side. We're gonna start putting everything back on the pit guard and rewiring it. And I'll try to show the whole process. I'm gonna speed the playback up a little bit so that you'll, I'm trying to find the sweet spot where you can see what I'm doing, but you won't have to watch the whole thing in real time. So here we go. Thank you. 
Aside from moving the tone circuit to the middle, to the wiper rather than the input, this is pretty much as it was in stock form. I replicated these little twisty bend wires, though that's not really necessary. And uh, I forgot to measure the humbucker before I did that. But this is a 500K pot, 7.99K. So that's 500 in, in parallel with something. Probably an 8.1, 8.2K uh, pickup, pretty average bridge uh, PF style output. Um, and this is so I can reattach that ground wire. All the hardware is out of the bath and then you got all the naphtha off and it is clean and degreased and still looks all funky and relict whatever that, that means this week before to back them out i had to use a tool because they were so firmly in, in the body from corrosion and the cleaning and this little bit of three-in-one trifoil not three-in-one trifoil help them spin freely when necessary, but they'll, they'll stay right where we want them to be. Other than that, let's make sure this slides on without any issue. Good, it's got just enough. It doesn't have any wobble to it. It's making good contact. Now I'll put the thumb wheels back on. We're gonna start with the action way too high because you can lower them under string tension, but raising them under string tension is not a good idea. That should be a nice, way too high action to start with. All right, we'll take it off. Put the guitar to the side, because while these no longer have all the gunk inside them, and will move fairly freely as a result. They have been sitting up a long time. So I'm gonna put them all pretty far forward. Do the tri float on each set of threads. Now I'm only gonna to try to approximate where, where they might've been before. I knew I was gonna to have to reset the intonation on this guitar anyway. All right, before I do the hardware back on all the way and knobs and such, I want to look at the fretboard. It's a really pretty piece of rosewood. And it's just thirsty. This is some Music Nomad F1 oil that I got. And overall, I've really liked it, except for one thing. The cap on it doesn't want to stay doesn't want to do what it's ought to do the cap itself comes off of this top piece and i won't don't turn it anyway 
I'll just use my finger to spread it out. A little bit heavier down here where it's the thirstiest. And then just little dabs working my way up the fretboard. Don't want to let this sit too long because it can, it can, in theory, soak down into the fret slots. But I don't think there's going to be a problem here. So I'm going to get the coarse excess off just with the paper towel. Nice funk coming off the board. So let me fix the cap on this damn thing again. I've super glued it. I've done all kinds of things. It just does not want to stay in there. I guess it's time to... I guess I can get rid of the black cap and just keep the plastic cap part because that's the part that actually screws on and seals. So. Ah, if I can get the line up right. So that's my product review of F1 Oil. Good product. Bottle lasts a long time. I've been using this on a lot of guitars for over a year now. I've still got about three quarters of it left, but the cap is crap. It's like uh, the difference between Kraft cheese and Kroger cheese. You know, if you get a bag of, say, shredded cheddar for nachos, whatever. Cheese inside is pretty much the same. And the difference is on the Kraft bag where it says tear to open. If you tear it, you can open it. On the Kroger one, they're mostly kidding. These nut slots. Let me look at those real quick. Just a little bit of grooving in there. Nothing too concern, concerning. But I might want to... Yeah, here we go. Just got some folded 800 grit sandpaper here. With a, a gentle fold for the larger strings. Not trying to do a full burnish. Just get some dirt out of the slots without changing the shape or, or depth. With unwound, I'll use the back of an exacto if that works. I don't know what this funk is, but it doesn't belong here. That's a lot better, at least. This rosewood is saying thank you very much. All right, all's well now, except one last thing. I, I, I need to find the little brass collars so I can, the little sleeve so I can put that knob on. That's not the thing. And um, the bridge is at this tilt because the humbucker is making contact with the back of the body right there. And uh, it sounds fine. It's not hurting anything. It's not worth taking it all apart and, and uh, getting a chisel or whatever. The skull is almost Danny Gatton approved. It's got a real nice taper. This is a Mojo Tone pot. Going from 250K to 500K gave some nice clarity to the pickup. And using the 50s wi uh, tone wiring. Keeps that clarity even at lower volumes and the 22 uh, nanofarad cap. Gives a nice range throughout three quarters of the treble and then goes to fresh cream stuff. The issue that's remaining is all the strings sound great except for the low A when it's open. So I play at the first fret. So 24 frets are all good, but the open is bad. The nut slot, slot is too low. Let me show you that and we'll talk about what we're going to do about it. All right. 
See how the low E string is sitting up in the slot, and so is the D string to a small extent, but the A is buried. That A nut slot has lowered itself over the years and is too low. That's not going to be related to the cleaning I gave it earlier. It's just too low. And rather than replace the entire nut or anything, I'm going to fill in this slot with some baking soda and super glue. And then I'll cut the new slot in that. And uh, that should do the trick. And later, if the owner wants to take it to a real luthier and have a new nut put on, that's fine. But this will more than do the job uh, on a very nice budget. And will sound just fine. All right, the end result of that is now the A does not buzz when it's open. And uh, I also lowered the low E string just a little bit. So I raised the A string and lowered the E, e string because there was just not, there was way too much movement here at the first fret. There's still a little bit more than I might prefer in a total setup. But uh, my net files are on the uh, dull side. I don't do this very often and they're very old. It's an old use that a friend of mine gave me. So that's about as close to precision as I'm going to aim for on this guitar. Uh, should play in tune just fine on that F and that B flat. And it's not buzzing, so let's let's hear that real fast. Uh, no problem with intonation now. So here's an F7. B flat major 7. No issue with the tuning down at the, at the first fret anymore uh, with the lo low string going sharp. And I can play the open A again. Still got to put the tone knob on. Other than that, this guitar is great and ready to go home, but he has nothing to play it through because his old pro junior died. So part two of getting my, my old friends rigged together will be making his pro junior work again.